What's up guys, it's your boy Dante, and I know I haven't been consistent with posting like I said I was. There's just been a lot that's been going on. And I hate saying it, but here's why. If you've been following this channel, over the last four months, I posted my college decisions reactions video, and that video got 144,000 views. So if you haven't watched it already, what are you doing? Get off of this video now and go back over to my college decisions reaction video, watch everything, and you might get a little surprise at the end. For those who did watch it, thank you. And this video is gonna be a little bit about how I got into those colleges, what college am I attending? Because a lot of people just don't know what college I'm going to yet. If it wasn't already obvious. And just some extra thoughts. So because I didn't want this video to take 10,000 years to film, I actually wrote down some key points on my tablet about what everyone actually wanted out of this video. And surprisingly enough, a lot of people actually asked me what college do I intend on attending in the fall? And if it wasn't already obvious, because a lot of people were saying I was between Yale or Harvard, we all knew it wasn't gonna be Yale. Enough said. I'll be attending Harvard University in the fall, and at the time when this video was recorded, I'll be leaving in seven days, so stay tuned for that video of when I actually move in with my roommates in my dorm, so stay tuned for that video. But the rest of this video is actually gonna be about how to actually get into these prestigious colleges just like me. Because if you guys have not seen the college decisions video, I actually got into four out of the eight Ivies and many other prestigious colleges. And I know I'll be able to help you in making sure that you're able to get into those colleges as well. Hopefully. So one of the main questions I actually was being asked was what do I intend on actually concentrating at Harvard? And I want to concentrate in a government politics field where I can explore mock trial, law, and then finish my undergrad. And then after undergrad, I can hopefully go on to Harvard Law Graduate School. But that's just the goal. And we'll see when we get there. And now for the extracurriculars and my stats, the juicy part. But, but, but wait, before we get there, we have a message from today's sponsor. Just kidding, we don't have a sponsorship, but you know how we can get sponsorships? If you like, subscribe, and share this video and my other amazing videos, then we can get a sponsorship. So if you can do that for me, I'd love you so much. Love you, bye. Anyway, now that that sponsorship is now over, we can go into my stats and extracurriculars. So first off, I actually applied through the Common App, which some people choose to apply through Common App or QuestBridge based on what you think is better. Now, I won't give any recommendations on what you should choose. You should just look at what your financial situation is and then choose based off of there. And a lot of people also ask me, was it expensive to apply? Yes. I was not as fortunate to get fee waivers for my application, so I had to spend a lot of money for all those applications. And for all those that are wishing to apply now, just expect to spend at least 60 to $80 per application. So you can do the math. I applied to 21 and you can do the math there if you wanna know exactly how much I spent. But if you want to know exactly how much it costs without having fee waivers, then you know it's gonna be pricey, but make sure you always budget that in. So because I actually applied through the Common App, one tip, that I will give you. If a college has optional essays, which they will, always fill in the optional essays. If you see optional, just ignore it. It's not optional, it's it's required. Just take it as it's required. If it's a prestigious college, that essay is required. I would not expect you to get in without filling in that essay. And I know I was being a little bit maybe OCD with this, but if it's 250 words, at least try to get as far as you can. For me, I actually did like 250 out of 250, or my main common essay was 650 words. I did 650 words. I'm not saying that's necessary, but I really feel like me maxing out the amount of like info I can put into one essay was really like a help to me at least. So when you see optional essays, do it. And so now for my extracurriculars. In the whole common app spiel, like the whole thing, they offer 10 slots for extracurriculars and five slots for your honors. So for me, that was not a lot because I had a lot to say before knowing about common app. And then when my whole life was just dumbed down to 10 slots, it was like, wow. So this is the trick. Use as much information as you can when you're putting in these slots. So for example, because I wanted to go through a, like a government, student government track at Harvard, five out of the 10 slots that I had for my extracurriculars were student government based. So for one, I was the president of my student council 
uh, for my senior year, vice president for my junior year, and so forth. I only put that I was the president for my senior year because I was the most important and then list a bunch of things that made that position important. Because remember, you only have five honors, so you also wanna kinda put in, just put in a little bit of spice, put in some of the honors that you had for that extracurricular. And then you'll be able to get 15 honors because you're putting in all the extra information into your extracurriculars as well. And Whatever you intend on concentrating, if you're undecided, at least try to gear your application and what you want to do at the college. Because the college is also looking for people that are going to reflect their college in a good way. So for me, I want to do student government there. So they know I'm probably going to go to Harvard and do student government. How am I going to show that? I show that through my application. So if you want to go to Harvard or Yale or wherever to do art, at least show that in your application that you're very much art oriented or liberal oriented. So just make sure to show that in your extracurriculars. Then for honors, I was grappling with this. Sorry, I'm looking at my tablet. I was grappling with this for a very long time of what I should have included. And it was hard at first because I was like, it's only five and I don't know what's right and I don't know what's wrong. And I, I guess I did something right. Sorry, I'm scrolling through. I guess I did something right. So I will list my five honors because they're not a secret. And uh, I actually got on the news. So I was the Ken's Five All-Star student um, and I also got a scholarship for that. And that was through my 10th, 11th and 12th grade. I was a National Math uh, Science Initiative star student and I got a scholarship award for that in sophomore year. Um, and I also placed third in academic decathlon for states for speech and interview. I was, this was kind of a sign. I was a Harvard Book Club recipient. Like I was a recipient for the Harvard Book Club award. Um, during my senior year, and then I was also an AP scholar. So I know it kind of seems like out there, but those honors were like the highlights of my whole high school career. So I would say if you are gonna dumb it down to five honors, at least try to make sure it's like a piece of everything. Like I got on the news, I was good at math and science. I got like a place in like speech and interview. And I also like was an AP scholar. So let they know that you're not only just like doing extracurriculars and getting honors out there, you're also getting good scores on your AP exams and your classes as well. So just kind of get a good balance for it. I can't exactly tell you what to put in there because everybody's different, but you can kind of see where I'm going throughout it. So for all those that actually wanted a more in-depth of exactly what I did for my extracurriculars, I'll be reading just a list of what I did, um, just so y'all can get a feel for what I did. I was the president of my school's student council. I was the editor-in-chief of my school's media team. I actually founded the team as well. Um, I was a representative for the academic decathlon, so I actually competed and won a couple medals. Um, I was the group secretary for the superintendent student advisory council for my district, so I worked with the superintendent and created team meetings and stuff like that. Um, I also was a representative for the UIL Academics or University of Interscholastic League Academics. And that's kind of like academic decathlon where I studied and then took tests and then placed and all that. Then I was also the lawyer. I put lawyer slash attorney slash team lead for my school's mock trial team. It was my first year doing it uh, my senior year. So I wanted to include it because even though it was my only year doing it, uh, we still broke the norm by going to state while doing it. And so I was also the president of my junior class council. And so we worked on prom and stuff like that. That was in my junior year. Um, I also went to Texas Boys State and there I was a nationalist for all those who went to Texas Boys State. I was a nationalist and I became a state delegate there. So that was pretty exciting. I also wanted to put that down. I was the vice president of my National Honor Society, both 11th and my senior year. And then lastly, I also worked at the food bank um, where I, I did 100,000 pounds of food in the summer 2021. So that was pretty fun to do. And so all of the whole list that I just explained was ordered based off of importance for me. So make sure when you're doing your application, try to make sure your most important extracurriculars at the top and then the ones that kind of trickle down or towards the bottom. So those are all my extracurriculars. And now for my stats. So I won't be explaining all of my AP scores and SAT scores. Those are more personal. And I want everyone to realize that you need to make sure that you don't judge yourself based off of your SAT score, your AP scores, because these colleges are in reach. And now that every college is AP and test optional, 
you don't need to submit these scores if you don't feel like it. So when I was watching these videos, I was always kind of disregarded by seeing kids getting a 1600 on their SAT and then still not getting to an Ivy League. So you just need to make sure you focus on yourself get the best academics. But I will be telling you what my rank was, my GPA. So I'm going back through my transcript right now. I was a valedictorian in my class, I was first, and I had a class size of about 375. And so for some that may be like a humongous class, but for Texas, we were predominantly a smaller school. So we were a rural school as well, so I also used that. And I took a lot of APs. Um, I think I took 12 by the end, I took AP, Hold on. So I actually ended up taking 11 AP courses, which is still a lot. And so I'll be listing them based off of from my freshman year to my senior year. So my freshman year, I took AP Human Geography. For my sophomore year, I took AP Government, AP Macroeconomics, and AP Chemistry. That was a lot. And then for my junior year, I took AP Biology, AP US History, and then AP English Language and Composition. That was also a mouthful. For my senior year, I took AP Environmental Science, AP English Literature and Composition, AP Calculus AB, and AP Computer Science A. And I also self-studied AP Computer Science A for the second semester because I actually left the class after the first semester to actually do something else with my time um, because it was becoming a lot. But I self-studied and I took all the tests and they went well. Okay, pause. This is future Dante editing right now. I also forgot to mention that I also got straight A's in all my classes except for one, which I got an 89 in because my freshman year English teacher decided to give me an 89 because she was petty. Anyway, we're well, back to the video. Just because I took 11 AP courses does not mean you have to take 11 AP courses as well. I really think of it this way. If your school does not offer AP classes, the college is gonna look at what else are you doing with your time. So make sure that you're using as much of your time as possible to go outside and do something that is productive to the world. If your school does offer a lot of AB courses, make sure you're grinding and grinding and taking all those AB courses while balancing your extracurriculars. So there is no perfect fit amount of AP courses is just based off of what your school offers and if you're able to take them. Now, if your school offers the AP courses and you're choosing not to take them, that not might be the best choice for you. So take that with what you will. Those are my stats and it was hard, not gonna lie. So I just wanted to end the video on more of a lighter tone with just some final thoughts. Um, I just wanna remind everyone to just be yourself with your application. For me, and I do not recommend this, I actually applied all except one application where nobody helped me on my essays. I actually just wrote them, edited them myself with a lot of grinding and then just submitted them without having a second person read them. Now, I don't recommend that for everyone, but if you feel confident in yourself that you can apply to colleges like that, go for it because it worked for me. And so just be yourself and don't stress. This application process is very stressful. Like I will tell you right now, I was very stressed out with this application process. And one thing that I would want to tell my younger self is to stop stressing because in the end result, your result will be okay. Like you will be okay once you're done. And so I just wanna let everyone know, don't stress, you'll be okay. And other than that, I hope to see you guys soon. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications because as you saw earlier in the video, I'm trying to get a sponsorship. So go ahead and like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications. Stay tuned for the next video when I move into Harvard University and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.